All right, greetings everyone. Welcome to the fourth part of the video for section 4.1. Uh, continuing on with st uh, studies of exponential functions, um, doing a little bit more with compound interest, and then one more example with exponentials. All right, let's talk about something called APY, which stands for annual percentage yield. And as it says, this is the actual percent a quantity increases in one year. Wait, what? Okay, so here's what this is talking about. So recall that in our compound interest formula, the value for R, which we also see here in this formula, that stands for our APR, which is what we call our annual percentage rates. So for example, in the problem with grandma's money, we were told that our a APR was 1%. So annual percentage rate, and that word annual means yearly percentage rate, right? However, as you might imagine, if you were compounding more than once a year, so say monthly or weekly or daily or something like that, okay, so you're earning interest off your interest. Well, when you do that, it actually raises the uh, percent that you actually earn on your investment. Okay, and what it does is you, again, it raises it so you actually learn a little bit more. And that percentage that you actually earn, we can find using this formula for APY. So it's given by APY is one plus R over K raised to the Kth power minus one. Now notice this formula doesn't include a starting value and it also doesn't include a part a uh, period of time. It just gives us the amount Again, the percent will earn in one year. It gives it as a decimal. So let's look at an example of that. So um, talking about the birthday check example again, we found that an account with 1% interest compounded daily, the amount in the account after 10 years will be $1,105.17. And we're asked to find the APY of that. So and do that simply by using that formula we were just looking at. So the one plus R over K to the Kth minus one. Go ahead and plug in the information we have. So one plus our R value, so that's our interest rate is 0 0.01 divided by K where we're compounding daily. So we know K is gonna be 365, we'll also have the 365th power minus one. We'll again plug this all into the calculator all at once, being very careful to use parentheses. And when we do that, I get 0 0.01005, which if I convert that back into a percentage, let's move the decimal over two places, we get 1.005%. Okay, and notice even though it's not much, that is larger than what the APR was. So the annual percentage rate was 1%, but compounding daily actually gave us 0.005% of a, uh, yeah, of a percent more, okay? All right, one more example. So here we're told that a car was valued at $45,000 in the year 1991, and the value depreciated and if you're not familiar with that word, depreciate means goes down. Okay, so it decreases, which hopefully makes sense because the value of cars decrease over time. So the value depreciated to $11,000 by the year 2002. So the first question says, what was the annual rate of change as a percentage between 1991 and 2002? Okay, so we're dealing with exponentials here. And we're not doing anything compounding. Doesn't say anything about compounding. So we don't need our compound interest formula here. So we're gonna use one of our exponential or general exponential function formulas. And because we're looking for something as a percentage, that tells me we wanna use the one that's f of x equals a times one plus r to the x. And since we're looking for the annual rate of change, that tells me we want the value for r here which means we should have all the other information. So let's go through what we have. So we start with, we're told that in 1991, the value of the car was $45,000. So 
So it's like that would be our starting value, so that will go in for A. Um, I said the value depreciated to $11,000. So that's the value it became. So it looks like that would actually be our output. So I'm going to slide this over so everything fits. So we're going to have 11,000 equals 45,000 times one plus where we're looking for R. So that won't, we don't have any values for that. And then we need to have something for a value of X and notice that in most of these problems, the value for X has been the number of years. So notice that we start in 1991 as our starting year. And then the ending year is 2002, but we're not gonna plug in 2002 for the value for X. What are we gonna plug in instead? Right, we're gonna plug in 11, right? Because it's been 11 years from 1991 to 2002. So remember we're working with years, we wanna do a number of years since sometime. And since 1991 is our starting year, we'll plug in 11 because that's 2002 is 11 years after that. All right, and now we can solve for the value of R here. So what I'm going to do is go to a different page here so we can work this out. Okay, so here we have a little more space. So again, our setup was 45,000 or sorry, not 45,000, 11,000. Oh my goodness, apparently I cannot write. Here we go. 11,000 equals 45,000 times one plus R to the 11th. So to solve for R, so we'll begin by isolating. So we'll start by dividing by 45,000 on both sides. Okay, so these cancel. We have just one plus R to the 11th on the right hand side. On the left hand side, we have that 11,000 over 45,000, which we could divide and get some decimal. But to save accuracy, which is gonna be really important, I'm actually not going to divide them. I notice I can reduce them because they have a common number of zeros here. So it becomes actually 11 over 45. And then we need to solve for R, keep isolating the R over here. And notice that the R and the one are inside a parentheses being raised to the 11th power. So to solve for this, what we have to do is use inverse operations and do the 11th root on each side. And so when we do that, we'll end up with one plus R equals the 11th root of 11 over 45. Again, I'm gonna leave that for now to save accuracy and then I can subtract one from both sides to isolate the R. And so we end up with R equals uh, 11th root of 11 over 45 minus one. Plug that into our calculator here. And we end up with, looks like negative point one two o oh, two, which converts to negative twelve point o oh, two percent. So looks like the value of the car is going down by twelve point o oh, two percent every year. Cool. All right, we're able to answer the first question now. Let's go back to the PowerPoint and look at the second one. So the second question says, assume that the car value continues to drop by the same percentage. What was the value of the car in 2007? Well, to answer that, we need our equation, which we now have all the information for, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and fill that in. Okay, so we can do that by, we have our equation is f of x equals our start, starting value, which is 45,000 times one, plus our value for R, which is minus 0.1202. Okay, and then raised to the X power. And if we simplify that a little bit, we end up with F of X equals 45,000 times, we can do the one minus 0 0.1202. If we do that, we end up with 0.8798 to the X. And then we can very simply find the value of the car for 2007. 
I plug in something in for X, and I remember we're not going to plug in 2007 for X. For 2002, we plugged in 11 because that was 11 years after 1991. So for this one, we'll go ahead and plug in 16 because it's 2007 is 16 years after 1991. So do F of 16 equals 45,000 times 0.8789 raised to the 16th. If we plug that all in the calculator, okay, it looks like our car after that amount of time or in 2007 is going to be equal uh, worth $5,704.85. Okay. All right, that's it for section 4.1. Thank you for watching.